Let's get on to bases. So we've talked about acids. We've talked about the dissociation of acids into conjugate base and H+. Now let's talk about bases. So there are a number of different bases. These can be charged bases, such as hydroxide, or these can be uncharged bases, for example, like ammonia and amine derivatives. What happens in the case of a base, as we said before, is that it can attract H+, or a proton, resulting in the formation, as you can see from this particular equation on the board, of BH+, and OH-. Okay? BH plus being the conjugate acid in this particular case, as opposed to the conjugate base, as we saw in the case of acidity. As with the acids, the strength of the base can be shown by the equilibrium constant, in this case, Kb. And this results in pKb also being able to be determined. However, and this is something to bear in mind, more commonly, you will find that uh, in the interest of clarity, a base strength is actually measured by pKa. Now this is not, contrary to understanding, the loss of a hydrogen or a proton from the base. This is the loss of the H plus from the formed conjugate acid. So this equation here, as you can see on the board, this shows that BH plus, which is our conjugate acid, dissociating to give us our free base and our H plus, correlates actually to a dissociation, or acidity constant, pKa. The equation for this is shown on the board. Weak bases, therefore, have very low pKa values, and strong bases have very high pKa values. And when we consider any acid or base, we need to know, or should be aware, that pKa plus pKb is equal to 14. Strong bases include things like sodium hydroxides. Indeed, mostly every hydroxide is regarded um, as a strong base. And as we said before, in, case, in the case of hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acids, they're considered to be almost completely dissociated in water. And so therefore, in the case of our NaOH, we see that sodium iron and hydroxide iron are formed in solution. Now, of course, what you'll be talking about, you may wonder, is, well, we were talking about pH being potens hydrogen. We're talking about H+. So where does OH- come into this? We're not measuring OH- when we're looking at pH. We're measuring H+. And this is because OH- will bind with any residual or large amount of residual H+, in water, and convert it back into water because of the equilibrium of H+, and OH- in water, and the preference for it to exist as non-ionized water. This decreases the amount of H plus in solution and therefore increases the pH, making it more basic. Amines are also examples uh, here of weak bases. Remember we had weak acids? You can also get weak bases. And here we see the pKa, remember, that is the equilibrium constant associated with the dissociation of the conjugate acid being 9.25. Methylamine is 10.66 pKa. And the equilibrium in this particular case for ammonia, and this is how you would form ammonium hydroxide solution, is where we have our base, NH3, which is a neutral base, abstracting a proton from H2O to give us NH4+, a complex cation, otherwise known as the ammonium iron, and OH-, hydroxide iron. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.